Ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely excited to have the one, the only, Ted Nugent joining us uh, in a powerhouse interview. And the reason I know it's going to be a powerhouse, I had a chance to have him call into the Sunday uh, weekend show, uh, listening right here in Central Texas, as he was driving. And uh, then I had a chance to talk to him off air about some of the other topics he wanted to come on air and talk about. So a lot of this is going to be news breaking. His new tour, the Black Power Tour, is celebrating the fathers of rock and roll, incredible black Americans, and they're demonizing that in the media. Uh, I mean, there's nothing that Ted Nugent can't do right because he's pro-liberty and the Marxist uh, Decepticons. Uh, are out there trying to divide and conquer this country. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how he's been persecuted by the feds. We're going to talk about how he's got one of the most popular ammo lines in the country. We're going to talk, most importantly, about taking America back. We've got him for the full hour. You want Ted Nugent? I had to do some serious begging, but we've got him. Uncle Ted, great to have you back with us. Well, thanks, Alex. I feel welcome. Uh, even when I'm not here, I feel that I'm represented accurately by you. So on behalf of uh, working hard, playing hard, logic America, thank you. Wow, where should we start? You heard some of the topics I threw out. Well, where should we begin? Let's talk about uh, your big rock and roll tour coming up and the media trying to lie to people. Well, you know, for the last, I think this is my 55th year touring, something like that. I started back in Detroit in the 1950s. Uh, my band won the Battle of the Bands. We actually opened up for the Supremes and the Bold Brummels at the brand new Cobo Hall back in 1962 or 63. Wow. And I, you know, I just don't have any white musical influences. I thought Pat Boone was weird and I thought Little Richard was God. You know what I mean? <laughs> Me too, yeah. So when, when yeah, I heard you reference the, the ultimate love songs yesterday, Free For All and Dog Eat Dog and Stranglehold. I mean, my music has a life of its own. Really, after 50 years of touring, uh, the audience is still are so intense and passionate and high energy and let, let's let's morph into when i discovered the culture war you know this this tour is called ted nugent black power 2013 because i'm bringing forth the celebration that there really is a black thing and the black thing that inspired me from the very beginning was james brown's work ethic little richard's work ethic Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley's, their work ethic. You can't become the fathers, the gods of thunder, of rhythm and blues and rock and roll unless you really put your nose to the grindstone and you work your ass off. My dad and mom forced us kids to do that. That was the battle cry of the American dream in the 1950s and 1960s until the, until the, the beatniks turned into the drooling, puking, idiot hippies. And I was always attacked in the media, even the beginning when I was just a teenager, because I, I was a hunter, because I ate venison, and I, I carried a gun, and I believed in self-defense. And this new curse of leftism, this Mao Zedong ugliness was metastasizing across America. So at first, Alex, when I did these interviews, and they would attack me because I spent the weekend at the shooting range with my dad or I spent the weekend with my family up north deer hunting. I, I like squinted and furrowed my brow and went, wait a minute, you're condemning what is obviously perfect self-defense is perfect. Deer so you woke up perfect. early on j j just because you were being yourself and being demonized. And I want to ask you this question and then continue along the line and what the media is saying about your black power tour because they want to create division. They can't have us come together. Always, yeah. But it's so incredibly simple uh, that, that this country was founded on the Second Amendment, but they try to act like it's so incredibly alien. I'm tired of calling them liberals or even leftists, even though that's as they're known. These are, as you said, Maoist. These are hardcore authoritarian pigs who know they're authoritarian pigs. They're not environmentalist wackos. They're not uh, ignorant. They're not stupid. They're criminals that want to run our lives and make us their slaves. I couldn't have said it better. They really are criminals. I don't care if it's uh, Hillary Clinton refusing to provide security on the anniversary of 9-11 in the, some of the most dangerous areas in the world, and then getting upset because we asked her why, or that the attorney general is running guns to Mexican drug gangs and then trying to blame mom-and-pop gun shops for the, for the criminality of his directive and his program. Yeah, it really is like, I don't know if it's one flew over the cuckoo's nest, Soylent Green, or Planet of the Apes, but the insanity running amok in this country right now can only be described as evil people with an 
evil agenda. I am sick and tired. I figured right way back in the 1970s when people go, well, they're well-intentioned, but they're misinformed. That's not true at all. Their intentions are evil, and they know exactly what we're doing. May I quote Nancy? You don't have to read this. You need to sign it, Pelosi. Yes. Can you get any more anti-American and anti-Constitution, anti-we the people than that insanity? No, you can't. And I apologize for interrupting you and getting you off into the tyrants. I just want to, uh, you have, are so prominent and know so many other prominent people. I think it's time to start a campaign to say, we're really the liberals. Thomas Jefferson was a liberal saying more freedom. George Washington was a liberal meaning more freedom. I think they've stolen the term liberal uh, or, or even progressive saying let's build our country up. It's time to call them what they are. A cult, a gang of criminals that want a managed, organized economy controlled by them and their cronies and that they have basically occupied this country and there's no living with them. We either take this country back and win the war or we're going to be slaves no more win the battles and just let the enemy keep launching attacks it's time to go on the total offense as the gun manufacturers are doing as you're doing as i'm doing that's why they're scared of us let's talk about ted nugent taking america and then the world back how do we get on the offense and do you agree there's no more quarter they're not giving us quarter we either take it all back or we're going to lose well you're absolutely correct uh i think it can best be uh framed in the call that you took the other day when I dropped my cell signal, and uh, I think it was Doug, a, a cross-country trucker, who said he was proud that Ted came over to our side. Alex, are you kidding me? <laughs> Talking about clueless. Now, with all due respect, especially to my good trucking buddies who use a power service diesel additive, but, but can you believe that that kind of ignorance exists, that people are unaware that in the Rolling Stone cover story, is on the cover of Rolling Stone with a Walter PPK that I actually had on me in New York City during the photo shoot, celebrating the Second Amendment for the entire front page feature story in Rolling Stone magazine in 1978. If you go back to my interviews in 1968, 1965, I have always promoted and celebrated, never defended the obvious and unambiguous right to keep and bear arms. I have been on the front lines. That's why the left and the media and what you could, you're accurately identifying is the cult of denial. When you have a, a Valerie Jarrett, who is the communications czar for the president, who actually publicly quotes Mao Zedong, are you kidding me? So I have been on the front lines. So the answer to the big question, how do we take our country back? How do we get on the offensive? All you have to do is study what you and I do, study what I've done since the 1960s. You never apologize. You take the beast face-to-face, hand-to-hand, close-quarter combat with the evidence from history that when there's power abuse like President Obama and Eric Holder and Hillary Clinton and, and all the czars and all his communist buddies, when they abuse the power and they create such a depth of corruption, if we don't communicate adamantly, firmly and politely, but consistently with our elected officials, Every chance we get, which we have to make the opportunity every week and demand accountability. We, here's it in a nutshell. Look in a person's eye. Ask them, ask them, what do you believe about the death tax? Do you believe that the government can steal from families after tax savings when mom or dad die? Do you believe the government can steal after tax savings from a family and that that should be the law of the land because if the person says yes i believe in it you're looking at the enemy of freedom the enemy of america of america and a thief if a person wants to get rid of the death tax if you want to compromise gun rights you're looking at the enemy we don't need to no more compromise when i was on capitol hill last week for the uh, or recently for the state of the union address i shook every republican's hand and i wouldn't let go and i tried to shake it like chesty puller looked him in the eye and went quick with the compromise we have compromised ourselves into a corner of communism cut it out and that's why the republicans haven't been getting the support they were getting because they clearly have been selling out on every front 
and, and, and now we've heard this hoax of, oh, Obama has a mandate. We need to become socialists so we can win. There's no point in having a Republican Party if they become the Democratic Party. And so how do we hold their feet to the fire uh, and, and point out that people that are quoting Mao Zedong, the greatest murderer, mass murderer in history, are, as you said, the enemy. I mean, my God, it's so simple if you're informed. Well, again, communication. I, yeah, I have been I have been fighting this fight in the most aggressive fashion I possibly can. My wife constantly shakes her finger and go, "Calm down. This isn't. You're not the only one t t taking this battle to the enemy." And I go, "You know, sometimes I think I am. Sometimes I'll contact an elected official, and they act like I'm bringing up some strange concept that the Second Amendment by." any honest scrutiny that the existence of the second amendment wow. is my concealed weapons permit period and again people say well why are you so obsessed with guns it's the canary in the coal mine in hundreds of other countries just in the last century when they come for those look out and look they're going after every other right we're going to go to break we're going to come back with ted nugent he needs no introduction ted nugent.com and I want to get more into this tour and how the media is trying to demonize it, too. I just find that intriguing. We're going to get into how he's been persecuted uh, because, believe me, I've gone through some of this, too. This is serious, folks. You've got to support the First Amendment or we lose everything. As we saw in Katrina and as we are watching now in New York and New Jersey, the federal government can't and won't help you in a crisis. FEMA ran out of water and MREs in days. Electricity is still off to over one million people. The Red Cross, who is quick to beg for money, is now slow to react. Don't put it off any longer. Get prepared today. While you're on InfoWarsShop.com, check out these other great preparedness items. The Aquapod Kit lets you store up to 65 gallons of water in your bathtub. The Pocket Socket provides you with manual electricity for small electronics like your cell phone. The Life Straw is great for your bug out bag. And check out our complete line of inner food products for great tasting and nutritionally dense foods that have a great shelf life. If you are looking to secure your home in a crisis, you can order Strategic Relocations, the film, a great companion to the book Strategic Relocations, third edition, and The Secure Home by Joel Skousen. When the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has already passed. Get prepared now. So if a crisis strikes your home, you and your family will be secure. Go to InfoWarsShop.com. If it sounds like I am in awe sometimes of uh, Ted Nugent, it's because I am. Because uh, I take it personal when people uh, are trying to take our little ranch we've had since Texas independence because under the estate tax, we won't be able to keep it. In fact, it used to be a lot bigger. It's, most of it's been sold off because of estate taxes the last 50 years when, when uh, you know, grandparents and people die. When they're trying to take my guns, and I know it's because they're authoritarians, I've read the UN treaty debates where they admit it's about a monopoly of power of the government. I take it personal. When Piers Morgan lies and says, I don't want all your guns, when Obama and all the rest of them have, have been on record saying they want the abolition of civilian ownership of firearms. It makes me mad. But I know they're following a blueprint of disarmament and then talking to me like I'm stupid and telling me, oh, no, you're just a conspiracy theorist. It makes me angry. And I see somebody like Ted Nugent hard charging seven days a week as I follow the media out there standing up for liberty for all of us, knowing if they take the Second Amendment, if they're that bold, they're going to take everything. To know that Obamacare was written to raise taxes on poor people and to screw them and to bring in socialism and death panels. Thank God Ted Nugent's upset. And, and listen, people say, Alex, why are you so upset? Because I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of living in denial. This is real for me. It isn't like I'm some libertarian conservative on the air, constitutionalist, because you know, that's a nice niche or something. It's my business plan. Okay, I believe in liberty. It's what made America great. And the fact that there aren't more people like Alex Jones and Ted Nugent is the problem. You're either on offense or you're getting screwed. And the tyrants are running wild because they think we're a bunch of sheep. Okay? And, and this country's on the edge of civil war. A few days ago, I had Ron Paul on. He said, yes, it'll cause a civil war if they come for the guns. Folks, it will. 
There are a large percentage of gun owners that are ready for war. I got a family, folks. I don't want this to happen. But damn it, I'm not going to back off either. Ted Nugent, this is a short segment, but on the subject of where this country is going, this isn't Russia or Germany. The tyrants need to know that the Second Amendment, like a time bomb, has been planted for them. And the fact that they're going after our Second Amendment has alerted the people of this country and the world. And I want the Marxist scum to know that they're going to lose this fight if they start it. Now, so, so what do you say about waking up and being alive? I know you've been alive and awake forever because of where you came from, but what do you say to those that are in a damn coma? Well, first of all, the prognosis is improving every day, Alex. I'm sure you see it from your callers and the people you hang out with, especially here in the great Republic of Texas. You know, if you met my kids, my grandkids, my wife, Jermaine, my brothers, my sister, all my hunting buddies, the production team for our Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild, our, our Sunrise Safaris guides, all the people that we hunt with, and we do all the charity work with all the children's charity, just working hard, playing hard America, where a few years ago they might have rolled their eyes when I said you shouldn't give up Saturday night specials and that there's no such thing as cop killer bullets and that none of these guns are assault weapons. They rolled their eyes because they didn't understand Dan, they were ignorant. Now all of a sudden they're going, boy, you were right. You were absolutely right. I see where this guy got in trouble because uh, his gun had a collapsible stock in New Jersey. Or where this, this hero of the military was thrown in prison in Washington, D.C. because he was legally transporting his legally owned firearms from one state to the other. So it, it, this, is, this is a big wake-up call. As I said the other day, we should thank God Almighty that he sent Piers Morgan to be our foil. I mean, yeah. this guy is too easy to beat. This guy is too easy to decapitate with his fantasy and his British cult of denial. All you have to do, like you do and I do and everybody else I've seen lately, though we'll talk about the effectiveness of various individuals in a second, but the evidence is 100% on our side, and if we are aware of that evidence, and we know how to bring it to the argument, bring it to the so-called debate, as you did and I did, and more and more people are learning to do, you know, we got a we got a hero with the NRA, Chris Cox, Wayne LaPierre is getting better all the time when it comes to standing up for what right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed stands for. So the prognosis is increasing and getting better slowly but surely. But I think, like we should thank God that Pierce Morgan was sent down, I think we have to thank God that he sent Barack Obama, because this guy is so dis dis destined to destroy everything good about America. His policies, his scam, his lying, his deceit, his State of the Union, his campaigning, smart people who love to hear flowery, desirable speech are starting to realize the guy's a scam artist. And he is so arrogant in his scamming that it's become very apparent now. Let's come back and talk about that in the long segment coming up. The one, the only, Ted Nugent, tednugent.com. Get the news, the tour, the bullets, the ammo, everything at tednugent.com. I'm, I'm jealous of that website. Man, look at that. tednugent.com. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones with PrisonPlanet.tv. did you come up with stranglehold? I mean, were you channeling, uh, you know, the almighty or something? I mean, that, that is, that song is so perfect. How did you do that, Ted Nugent? It is a powerful lick. You should see it from where I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I play that lick every night, and my, my bands too, Alex, I've got to give a big salute to the greasiest, blackest gods of thunder in the world. Mick Brown on drums, Greg Smith on bass guitar, and Derek St. Holmes on vocals and guitar. I have every guitar player's dream, every concert, every song, every audience. This year we're going on the tour and with Sticks and Ario Speedwagon. We call the tour Ted Nugent Black Power because we're inspired. The Stranglehold Lick is a variation of all those black heroes, whether Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Sam and Dave, Stax Volt, all, all things Motown and Funk Brothers. There's a grind factor. 
fact that I was weaned on as a little kid in Detroit. And when I pick up, I can go across the room right now and grab one of my guitars. And if they're all plugged into amplifiers right now. And I could just pick it up and whip out a lick that would make you grind like an animal during the rut. Oh. I have, I've been clean and sober for 64 years. And when you're clean and sober, you really tune in when you get to jam with Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and play with B.B. King. Are you kidding me? You pick up, you kind of sponge the essence of that soul. And let's identify what that black music ultimately represented in its origins. Defiance. Defiance against slavery. Defiance against oppression. Defiance against your own black people shackling you and selling you as a slave. That's where that unbelievable James Brown work ethic came from. They all rose up and went, yeah, you think you can keep me down? Well, listen to this, mother, and I'm going to play some licks that everybody's going to dance to, and that's what we do to this day. So I'm very inspired by freedom, that uppity black spirit of my original inspirations, and we pay homage to it every night on stage, and I, I name them by name, and I've been doing it for 50 years. And by the way, you... You mentioned this to me earlier, but I just punched it in. Black Power, Ted Nugent. The media is freaking out. You've been saying this for 40-something years, yeah. that this is what inspires you, your band, all of it. But the so-called left, the tyrants, who say you don't like socialism, don't like gun control, it's racism, has no connection to reality, not even any facts. They just throw the word out there. They're the real race pimps. Margaret Sanger saying we've got to become liberals and take over to abort the black babies. What do you say to the media uh, freaking out over your black power 2013. I mean, from my research, the so-called left are really the proto-Nazis. The left in America and England created the eugenics that Hitler picked up. The truth is they claim that they're the anti-racist because they're the racist. Well, I think the biggest racist in the world would either be President Obama. I mean, when you say Trayvon Martin could have been my son. Well, with all due respect, Mr. President, Brian Terry could have been my son. And your Eric Holder sold the dr guns to the gangs that killed him. Try that on for size. Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Louis Farrakhan. Number one cause of black death in America? Not the, not the subhuman Ku Klux Klan. Black Americans kill more black Americans on a weekly basis than the Klan ever did in a year. It's incredible. And then, it really is incredible. And then you can't even have a tour paying homage to your, your music roots. It just shows, shows how sick these people are. They never want people to really come together uh, under freedom. Now, expanding on this, you mentioned the fact that the NRA is getting on the offense. When we have the memos that they want to confiscate our guns, when it's on record, you use the truth to defeat them. And during the break, we were talking uh, you know, you described as Republicans are more worried about adjusting their tie than actually, you know, being patriots. Expand on that. I mean, look, it's time to stop debating all their fake arguments about the children. They want our guns because they want a monopoly of power. And I think that's the key to the offense is pointing that out. Well, when I criticize the failures of the GOP, I, only the guilty need to feel guilty. We have some incredible leaders in this country right now, especially, which, which is why I'm a, right now I'm a Texan. I, I came to Texas 10 years ago because the wonderful, glorious work epicenter of Detroit that I grew up in turned into the hell zone of pimps, whores, and welfare brats because of liberal Democrats like Mayor Coleman Young and, and Mayor Kwame Kirkpatrick and Jennifer Granholm. So I came to Texas where we have genuine statesmen, genuine patriots who understand they serve we the people and the U.S. Constitution. Governor Perry is the best governor in America. Greg Abbott is the best attorney general in America. Ron Paul, Ted Cruz, uh, John Cronin. There's so many great, great constitutional representatives here in Texas. And John Stone in South Dakota, Mike Rogers up in Michigan, even uh, 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 Scott Walker now in Wisconsin. We see an improvement, a return to the common sense. And the exactly. So let me ask you this. In their, their guiding light that they have to p make an oath to to become elected officials. And that's the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights. So the, the once again, and I, I can't repeat this often enough, so many people who set their alarm clocks and bust their ass to be the best that they can be, they work, they work, they make ends meet, they save for a rainy day, they demand accountability and productivity by their sons 
and everybody in their family. That's how the Nugent family operates. That's how the Alex Jones family operates. But a lot of those people don't vote. A lot of those people don't communicate. They don't even know who their senator or their congressman is. So we, the people who want upgrade and a return to a U.S. constitutionally driven America, we have got to communicate with our elected officials because that some of the, the elected officials that I just named by name, there are some of those in every state, even California, New Jersey, and New York, and Illinois. They got these people, but they don't hear from us. So until you are an actual participant in the sacred experiment self-government, I'd like to thank you for nothing. I agree with you. And, and look at the areas like Chicago and L.A. and the areas that these authoritarians that call themselves liberals are in control. They bankrupt and destroy every city, every county, every state, every country they run because they are con artist criminals. And again, it's time for us to stop apologizing about the fact that we're right. It's time for us to stand up and call these crooks out. And that's why they say, oh, you're discredited yelling at Piers Morgan or, or Ted Nugent, you know, you know, told him get off people's backs and shut the hell up. Uh, and, you, you know, that you're basically full of crap. Oh, Ted's discredited. No, we're the only people waking people up out of their coma. And the fact that the so-called left is saying don't get angry, that shows they're scared of us getting angry. Absolutely. And you got to admit, Alex, um, you know, I, I wish I could name all of them, but it, it, everybody's got a different role and everybody's got a different style and a different approach. But you really have to hand it to whether you like it or not, Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh and Glenn Beck and, and so many of these guys out there that are and, and, and Laura Ingram and, uh, and, and, and Monica Crowley. I mean, so many of our side now have more and more of a voice and they are wielding the crowbar more than just the, the sweetie pie attitude that, it, that has opened the door for the tyrants to, to crush us to this degree. So yes, it's time to get tough. It doesn't mean you have to start punching or shooting, but you have to escalate the debate so that the enemy can't control things. I've been in every media, I do media every day, and anybody that has ever messed with me has lost because I have all the evidence to support what I stand for because I stand for the self-evident truth and being the best that you can be. And if you want to find out where Obama is taking America, check out his home gangster acorn hell of Chicago. Chicago has been run by Democrats forever. They're either all in prison or they're, they're, they're encouraging the shooting of their citizens. They, they have a gun-free zone where more innocent lives are lost every day than in any high carrying and concealed weapon jurisdiction in this country. And they won't admit it. They keep doing the same thing, claiming they want different results. That is not only disingenuous, that is rotten to the core. They hate freedom and they love abuse of power. They do, and that's why they're scared of us waking up out of our coma. Ted Nugent joins us, tednugent.com. If you're just now tuning in again, I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Ted, where do you think America will be if people don't stand up and don't take action, which is starting to happen? But if people don't stand up and really get in the face of this tyranny and back it off, because by getting aggressive politically with the First Amendment, we won't have to use the Second. But what is your concern because, uh, again, as I said earlier, I had Ron Paul on a few days ago, and he's concerned about civil war. It appears to a lot of sociologists and people that study this that the leftists uh, want to start some type of conflict and then brand the patriots as the homeland security documents under Obama's state that al Qaeda is not the threat. Now it's gun owners, conservatives, returning veterans. They're clearly trying to brand it. Uh, an article came out yesterday. Uh, where Homeland Security is buying drones, and in the training video, they're, they're going around looking for people selling guns to their neighbors. Uh, so we see that the Patriot American is the new target of Homeland Security. What can you say about that and how it segues into some of the persecution you've gone through? Tell us, tell us what's been happening to you the last few months. Well, gee, there's, there's so many issues there. Number one, thank you for bringing these things up because now people can Google and they go to your website. And if you go to tednugent.com, I would welcome you. I, I would love to have you part of our tednugent.com talk back. We have some hardcore, gung-ho, great American families on my talk back on my website. And we get all this latest update, too. And we make sure that we review it. We got people inside.
provide the deepest security in the United States government that are on my talk back. We have friends in most federal agencies and, and in every department of every political uh, activity in every state. And we're looking with a genuine spirit of concern and a genuine duty to participate as we the people, to ask questions and demand answers. And we got this far down the down the totem pole. We've gotten this bad off, and we've been abused, and the, the corruption has gotten this outrageous because so many Americans were disengaged. They bent over, and they couldn't believe that a government would hurt someone. I'll never forget the interview with the lady who was in Rwanda checking out some gorillas or something. And I mean the, the real gorillas, not the gorilla fighters, um, the gorillas in the mist. And she was crying because the the, uh, the the gangsters in Rwanda had attacked their their bus and killed everybody. She actually went, I can't believe that a human being would intentionally hurt another human being. Really, really. It's so naive. It, it, that that kind of brain dead soullessness has horribly taken place and taken root and metastasized here in America. So I know about the drones. I know about the militarization of law enforcement. But, but I'm not going to guess what might happen if Obama's dream of uh, tyranny comes true. I believe that more and more people are waking up. I believe that more and more people are communicating these serious issues about accountability and what happened in Benghazi and Fast and Furious, about the, 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 the crime of Obamacare, the abuse of power and the corruption, the absolute proven lies of every word out of this president's mouth, the president's mouth at the last State of the Union address. I believe that we are going to vote these bastards out, that we're going to demand accountability like they did in the ultra-liberal hell zone of Michigan with the Governor Rick Snyder. Now we've got a Republican. Uh, he's not a conservative, but he's way better than Jennifer Granholm. Scott Walker, huge upgrade in Wisconsin. I travel and I still rock and roll, and my tour will take me to every state and every major city across America again, 50 years in a row now. And when I communicate with people, Alex, I'm here to bring great, great upgrade to your attention. People are waking up, and we are going to take this country back at the voting booth. That's how we're going to do it. Well, listen, I'm not bragging about this. When I tell these stories, it's because it's important for people to know. I can now go anywhere in the country and can't walk 10 feet down a street without listeners stopping. And I'm just, you know, a little guy in all this over the years. And I went to a restaurant in Wimberley, Texas Saturday, and there were only about 10 tables and almost every table came over and wanted photos and were listeners. And I know you get the same response. That's what you're saying. It's exponential how many people are awake of every race, color, and creed. It's exciting. And I think the key to all this is saying, look, they want our guns to enslave us. They're liars. They're tyrants. Just calling it like it is. People are so hungry for that. And if we just go past the hoax that, oh, we're supposed to stand down and compromise. The other side never gives in. They just tell us to compromise, and then, as you said, we bend over. But let's talk about this. I talked to you off air when you called in on the Sunday show, and you said, oh, man, next time I come on, I'll tell you about the crap I've been going through. Uh, I, I think it's important to talk about how they spun what you said and some of the things you, you know, that have happened to you and how they're trying to go after you, because if they can take down Ted Nugent, somebody who's actually alive, whose heart is beating, and if they can demonize that, if we don't stand behind Ted Nugent, even if people don't 100% agree with you out there, they've got to stand behind you in the First Amendment, because if they can take you down, kind of the guy up there on the point, I mean, Second Amendment, you think of Ted Nugent and George Washington, and then down the road, maybe Alex Jones and Ron Paul and the NRA. But, I mean, let's say it. You're Mr. Second Amendment. I mean, buddy, I, I know you got the Second Amendment, but I hope you got bodyguards. You really are front and center. H have you realized that? Yes, I have. Over the years, I realized that when it comes to, to absolutely defining the God-given right to keep and bear arms, I've been on the forefront forever. And now people are realizing that the reason I'm considered an extremist and a zealot is because the concept of having a free people was very extreme in 1775. Yeah, the system and demonizes the founders. Out. Yeah. The system demonizes the founders. So I'm saying, you're Mr. Second Amendment. Tell, tell us about the persecution. Well, you know, I've been a hunter my whole life. My dad raised me to be law-abiding. I've been a sheriff deputy for over 
30, 34 years now. I conduct federal raids here in Texas with the FBI, the ATF, the DEA, the Texas Rangers, and the federal marshals. I've been, I've been very active, uh, hands-on in law enforcement for over 30 years now. Uh, my point being is that you don't become a sheriff deputy. You're not invited on federal, you know, fugitive felony raids if you're a questionable guy. You have to prove yourself, and I proved myself during my training, and I've proven myself during these raids. Well, I'm solidly in the asset column, but I've always been a legal hunter. My dad said, you don't dare break a law. I've never hunted out of season with the wrong weapon. I've always bought every tag and every license and every permit and really watched my P's and Q's. Well, a number of years ago, I was hunting in California, and our Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild show on Outdoor Channel has been the number one show, outdoor hunting show, for over 26 years now. Every year, we become the viewer's favorite because I do it honestly. I do it documentary to style, real down-to-earth, natural, organic, killing your own food. I don't play games, and I don't apologize. Well, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been so infested with anti-hunting, anti-wildlife, anti-Ted Nugent idiots that in California, hunting in an apple orchard on, on our TV show on Spirit of the Wild, we showed it on the air. I had bought my licenses and double-checked all the legalities with the director of California Fish and Game, James Fong. Long story short, after the show aired, U.S. Fish and Wildlife jackbooted thugs, subhuman punks, had a 36-man, guns-drawn, pre-dawn raid on my three hunting buddies' homes in California based on the allegation equal to a jaywalking ticket that I was hunting over bait. Alex, they kicked down doors, they confiscated guns and bows and video cameras and, and, and telephones and computers, photographs. Oh. They abused these poor families, 100% law-abiding, never broke a law in their lives, upstanding members of the community, and then they ran and they tried to charge me with felonies, claiming that somehow in the apple orchard I had placed a bait, which they did all kinds of forensic uh, uh, soil sample tests, and they came up with nothing. But because the allegations were such a scam, it was such a trumped-up uh, railroad uh, witch hunt that the attorneys in California said I could beat it, no question, but it would cost me between a quarter and a half million dollars. And remember, a jack-booted 36-man, guns-drawn, pre-dawn raid based on a jaywalking ticket. It just shows what crazy authoritarians they are and how they use regulations to harass people, but then exempt themselves when Obama's given a half billion dollars to his buddies uh, to a fake energy company. It is so amazing to watch China build three new coal power plants a week, but we're having them shut down when they're clean burning. They want this country bankrupted to make us dependent on them. And, uh, you know, even on our little ranch, in, in East Texas, uh, we've been hunting out there, and and this is a county where you know my grandfather was the tax assessor and stuff, and and now oh we're you know we're here to search everything you're doing uh, here on your ranch because you're you got hunters out here under a federal grant, and we found out they were harassing people everywhere, old families who have no criminal records, and it's all about government basically pissing on us to let us know hey. You're a criminal, government is God, and it just really lights a fire under my butt to just fight that much harder. Well, and let me tell you, I've got some great friends in U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and I'm not saying friends because, you know, I'm a, a schmooze with them. It's because we are dedicated to conservation. So I salute the genuine and law-abiding federal agents of every, every agency out there. But I hope the ones that are guilty are pissed off when they hear me talk about that, because if you're angry at what I'm saying, that would be guilt, because there are jackbooted thugs. Well, the SWAT, SWAT team raid, officials. the SWAT team raid is meant to chill and intimidate everybody into lying about you to throw Ted Nugent in jail, because if well, they can get Ted Nugent, they can get everybody else after that. And they tried it with my buddies. They actually reached it. Reached it. Well, here's the clincher. These subhuman punks, jackbooted punks, kicked down the wrong door. And I don't know if you know anything about search warrants, but I've actually participated in a number of search warrants as the, as the searcher. You've got to have every description of that domicile. You've got to have, you've got to have the color of bricks. You have to have the color of 
have the side and you have to have the street numbers and how big and which way they face. You have to identify neighbors' homes. Well, these subhuman punks kicked down the wrong door and held an old widow at gunpoint. Incredible. And Ted Nugent stuff. She never even heard of me. <laughs> Probably the only person who hadn't. Uh, again, this is what's so crazy about it is that they just continue to get crazier and crazier, just like when you read the Declaration of Independence, Ted Nugent, is it not like a mirror of what we're seeing unfold now? Absolutely. And once I've said it over and over again, the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, if I was dropped here naked in the year four, I could have written down all those points. Even if, even even not being the, the victim of tyranny and oppression, I know what freedom is. It's how God designed us to be self-sufficient, rugged individualism, to pursue our individual dreams, to be an asset to the people around us. Self-evident. environment that provides us soil and air and water and, and food and clothing and shelter. These are self-evident truths that our founding fathers wrote down because we wanted to send George a big middle finger message. Don't tread on me. Here's what we didn't get under King George, and here's what we're going to demand. And if you try to take any of this away from us, we will meet you at Concord Bridge, and we will blow your guts out. And they try to demonize you for that, but that's self-evident right to not be a slave. Uh, all the Bill of Rights the Constitution does is point out what's already there. And, and I loved how they tried to spin, uh, you know, what you said about Obama. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Are you talking about the time my friends from the Secret Service came and visited me? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just, you don't think I'm having any fun here, do you? <laughs> I got to tell you, I wasn't there when Richard Pryor's afro caught on fire, which was the highlight of comedy in the history of humankind. <laughs> but, but I get such a kick out of the media just doing somersaults in their own excrement, trying to attribute quotes to me that never came out of my mouth. And nowadays, of course, everything is on film, and there's, there's, there's recorded records of everything that comes out of my mouth, yet they still lie for their teeth. So it was a pleasant experience, but again, if you're going to take on the devil, you have got to be prepared for the devil's gang to misrepresent, to lie, to um, obfuscate, to literally go, go crazy trying to attribute something to you that never took place. So all I can tell you about my experience with the Secret Service, number one, I trained with them here in Texas, and I trained with them around the country. They're actually part of the uh, uh, President Bush's personal counter-assault team, and they trained on my ranch up here near Waco, Texas. So I knew these guys, and they knew what I was made out of. And let me tell you what the bottom line is. The Secret Service having to waste their time investigating Ted Law abiding asset to your fellow man America is they, they were absolutely ashamed of themselves. But they had to do it because Barbara Boxer and Diane Feinstein and Sheila Jackson Lee and Hold on one more second, we're gonna do five more minutes. The system tries to create a stereotype of myself, Ted Nugent, and others. We're people that don't want to be slaves. I mean, I take it real personal. When an authoritarian government tries to take over from an instinctual level, a survival instinct, but also historically studying it. Got five minutes left in overdrive uh, here uh, on this Thursday edition with Ted Nugent. Uh, and uh, Ted, uh, finishing up your Secret Service uh, story, you got up to the point of when the Secret Service had to visit you, when the media misconstrued what you'd said last year, uh, what happened? Well, the media, they didn't misconstrue, they intentionally lied about it. Said. Good point. And uh, I had a meeting with what I can only describe as the consummate professionals. These uh, men and women of the Secret Service, the vast majority of them are absolute dedicated warriors that are standing up for we the people, that are, that are, that are enforcing our laws, and that live true to their sacred oath to the U.S. Constitution. And all of them, to the man and woman, Alex, are gun guys. They love the Second Amendment, whether they're on duty or off, they're real gun guys. So I consider them not only friends, but blood brothers. We had a professional encounter. They had to check off the boxes because Sheila Jackson Lee and President Obama and, and Eric Gunrunning Holder and all his comments.
communist czars and Barbara Boxer and Diane Feinstein and, and all these maniacs, they hate me so much that they forced the Secret Service to investigate me. And at the end of the meeting, they said, well, we understand now, Mr. Nugent, we appreciate your time and your professionalism and your courteousness. And uh, we realize now that there was no threat against anybody, that you did not threaten the president, and we apologize for wasting your damn time. Absolutely, what you're saying, the president wasted their time in a very uh, professional right. way. Uh, in closing, I just want to say this. I think, and I want your take on it, that it's backfired that they're going after the Second Amendment because you know you don't need it till they come after it. And again, that's a self-evident that's a self -evident, uh, uh, statement there. Uh, but I really think this is the beginning of the end because they know the Second Amendment is a beachhead of the republic. It's what the country was founded on. And on that, the right to defend yourself, everything else is built on. And that's why they're trying to kill it and, and knocking TV shows off Discovery and you know, trying to have a purge and, and, and saying it's like porn or we've got to brainwash people is because the system knows that that's why 99% of cops in major polls are pro-gun. The Secret Service is pro-gun. Once you've used guns, once you've been around it, you understand it. And it's literally like a religion. We've just got to take people out and teach them safety, teach them history, get them into guns. It's over. I see liberals everywhere buying guns the last four or five years. And I think this desperate offensive against the Second Amendment is the death throes of these people. Final comments on that subject, Ted Nugent. And I think uh, everybody with a conscience and an ounce of sense realized that unarmed and helpless is an irresponsible condition. And you should avoid at, all, uh, at every opportunity with all intellectual responsibility to never be unarmed and helpless. And when the, the worst condition of unarmed helplessness is when tyrants and dictators and slave drivers and tyrants force the citizens into unarmed helplessness because Barack Obama and Eric Holder and all the leftists, they have their dream. It's called Chicago. It's a gun-free zone. You have to have the same state-issued paperwork you have to have in Havana, Cuba to own a gun or even buy BBs or pellets. You have to have a firearms owner's identification card in Illinois since 1972, and it gets more dangerous there all the time. They're slaughtering people left and right just while you and I have been on the air, Alex. So everybody out there, number one, be a member of the National Rifle Association. Give away membership to the National Rifle Association. Join your state firearms organization. Let your elected officials know that you know that the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed is what they took a vow to support. Absolutely. And if they don't like it, get out of America. Ted Nugent, this has been our best interview ever. TedNugent.com. Look forward to having you back again as soon as you can. The Black Power Tour starts now. TedNugent.com. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.